welcome to the Cheap Air Gunner channel. It's Cherokee Steve. I wanted to do a video on the hunting experiences, specifically squirrel hunting experiences that I've had since I've gone out consistently the last four Saturdays. Squirrel season here in Illinois runs from August 1st through February 15th of the next year. So, it started a little bit over a month ago and runs all the way through February 15th of 2022. Unfortunately, the public land that I'm closest to that is open to squirrel hunting with air guns, which does conveniently happen to be very close by, only allows squirrel hunting from August 1st through September 30th. So I'm trying to take advantage of as many, Saturday seems to be the best day that I can get out. Uh, and, you know, very early morning, try to get out there uh, just uh, prior to sunrise when the park, the state land opens and stay for usually about three to four hours. Now, unfortunately, if you've watched the past video, I did get a squirrel the first time I went out. Uh, the next three times, including this past Saturday, I have not gotten anything. I have had squirrel sightings. I have had a few shots on squirrels and have missed. Now, I have gone from the first Saturday and, back, and getting a squirrel uh, using my HPA Crossman KT HPA. The second time I went out, I took my pumper. The third time out, I went back to the KT HPA. And the fourth time, this past Saturday, I used my Hotson flash pump. Again, did get a shot on a squirrel using the flash pup, but missed. Only saw two squirrels this past Saturday. It was extremely hot. It was about 95 degrees. And I'm talking at 7 o'clock in the morning. 95 degrees. And you factor in the humidity. It was a very humid day. And they come up with what they call the heat index. And it basically felt like 105 degrees between the actual temperature and factoring in the humidity. So, uh, I don't think there were a lot of squirrels out this past Saturday. As far as the chatter and barking that I heard, it was much, much less than what has been normal for the previous three Saturdays but I was able to spot two and I think it was directly related to the squirrel call I take with me and use. At least the sightings came up shortly after using the call. What I have is a night and hail four in one squirrel call. It does a bark it does a chatter, it does a baby squirrel distress, which does use the mouth for the baby squirrel distress call. The rest of it is all hand operated between the chatter and the barking and The warning call. Now, the sightings have been related to usually me using the bark. First of all, I want to preface everything by saying squirrel hunting is certainly more difficult 
than I would assume the vast majority of people think it is. Number one, the spot that I like to go to that I've done most of my squirrel sightings at is a good half a mile trek in from the parking lot. If it's rained, it can be extremely muddy and sloppy getting to the spot. So far here early in the season, like I said, from through the entire month of August, it's been extremely hot and humid. And it's a workout just getting to the spot that I go to, to do most of my sitting, uh, which I've determined is the best way to go about it instead of stalking. But working my way to that spot is a good trek and a good amount of exercise, quite honestly. Um, factor in the weight of the gun, carrying it with me, as well as a backpack that I bring with me uh, with binoculars, the squirrel call, extra magazine, gloves, things like that. So, uh, you know, anyone who questions whether or not hunting is a sport, I definitely think, number one, that it is, and number two, that squirrel hunting is really a much bigger challenge than most people think. As far as getting to your spots where the squirrels are, or at least where you think they're going to be, the fact that wild squirrels are nothing like your neighborhood squirrels who are accustomed to human contact. Your wild squirrels are hiders. They will stay put even if they are called in. They will find a spot in a tree away from where you're at on the opposite side of the tree and will sit for hours. It is very difficult to wait out a wild squirrel. Move around to the other side of the tree, they move around in relationship to keeping the tree in between you and them. Very, very crafty critters, so to speak. The place that I go, the spot that I go, is extremely overrun with foliage on the ground. There's a lot of dead trees, a lot of dead branches that are below the overgrowth. It's very hard to do any type of walking and not making noise. It's, you know, the, the squirrels are really adept at hearing and seeing and knowing that what they're seeing is a threat and either fleeing or, as I said, hiding and not coming out. So in that standpoint, it takes a lot to just get them within range of getting a shot off, let alone nailing your shot. It's those reasons that I enjoy doing it. it I find it to be extremely challenging. Uh, the other call that I have used is uh, the two-quarter cutting call. Uh, the, you know, the sound of cutting nuts by a squirrel. basically done with two quarters. I'll use that as well. What I really have not used 
and would like to try the next time I go out is the baby squirrel distress. Um, the one thing I have watched is a bunch of videos with actual baby squirrels and making the distress sound and this is a pretty good at replicating that. The one thing you need to do along with making the, the baby squirrel sound is rustling a lot of the overgrowth on the ground around you to make it sound like there is a hawk flapping its wings and causing the baby squirrel to make the distress sound. So I, I'm going to try that, see if that works to bring in anything. My lack of success has been frustrating, but yet I always leave, make my way, and kind of do stalking when I go from my spot in the public land back out to the parking lot. Always keep my ears and eyes open for squirrels on the way back and out, but I always feel satisfied at the end of the day, knowing I'm out there, I'm trying, I am getting really the vast majority of ex exercise that I get during any given week. And, uh, but I have questioned exactly what exactly is my lack of success? Uh, as I said, the, the, just getting to the spot that I like to sit at is very hard without creating noise. Whether or not I've questioned whether or not I'm using the call correctly, you know, a lot of a lot of squirrels do their barking as a warning. So if there are squirrels in the area, maybe using the bark is not the best thing to be doing. Maybe I'm scaring them away, thinking that there is a predator in close proximity. I've questioned. Whether or not I have, at least in this case, the last time I've used and plan on you, continue to using the flash pup, do I have it set up correctly? Well, one of the things I added to the gun was this hook that attaches to the Picatinny rail that I use for a single point sling mount. And I really thought I had the gun set up very well, at least for 25 yards. And the gun itself, I have confirmed, is extremely accurate. So am I doing my part or not doing my part in getting an accurate shot off? I don't think it's in the gun. The one thing I have questioned after the last time out and getting a shot off and missing was the amount of dependency I put on the sling, trekking into the public land, getting to the spot I like to hunt at. Um, questioning now exactly how sturdy the rail system is set up on the flash pump. I know to keep the weight down, it's aluminum, so it's very light. It's mounted to uh, the breech on the back, but the front of the rail is mounted to a plastic barrel band. So, again, how sturdy is it? Perhaps using it, to support a lot of the carrying that I'm doing of the gun with the single point sling 
is not the best idea. And what I did today to con try to confirm that is see, knowing the gun was set up extremely accurately at 25 yards, what is it shooting right now at 25 yards? Let me show a little bit of a video that shows it was farther off than I really hoped it would be shooting. So here I'm showing the uh, shooting range I've got in the backyard. I'm walking to the corner where I lay in the prone position. The grass is extremely flattened out back here. There's the backstop I've made out of an old section of fence, wood fencing. 25 yards across the backyard. I'm walking down to the target now. I did some shooting on the upper right-hand corner target and the upper left-hand corner target. Now here, as I get closer to the backstop, I'm gonna go around to the back and show my setup. I have put in a hinged, propped up board keep it upright as you can see there and I've reinforced the middle back of the target with some thick wood assuming it would shoot through the fencing board but here the upper right hand target I was consistently off to the right and low which is how I tend to shoot I tend to pull my shots I tend to drop the barrel and pull with trigger pull to the right. But I made some scope adjustments anyway, and here in the upper left-hand corner, the one farthest to the right is one shot. The two down low is two shots, and the holes right in the middle, dead on. I was pretty satisfied with this group. Right hand, upper right hand, adjustments, upper left hand. And pretty much figured the gun was set up. So as you can see from that video, it was shooting off to the right, which makes sense. I've got the hook set up facing the left hand side of the rail and it's on the back of the rail. So I may be skewing the scope and the rail assembly by relying on it so much and uh, supporting the majority of the weight of the gun as I'm walking in to my spot uh, by pulling the back end off to the left which would skew the scope off and the rail off to the right and shooting to the right so probably not going to be relying on that uh, sling setup. Uh, maybe looking for a double pointed sling that doesn't incorporate <laughs> the optic rail. That would make sense. Um, but I just wanted to address, use this. Uh, number one, show you my shooting setup in the backyard. Show you uh, the effects of what I've done and how it affected the optics. I've got it dialed back in. I am, you know, confident that wherever I'm off center bullseye from is completely my fault, whether the shot is low or to the right or both. At this point, it's, you know, when I am concentrating, keeping it on bullseye and following through with my trigger pull, you know, I hitting the center of the bullseye. So it's, it's not the gun at this point, it's not the optics. So if you're out there and you're hunting and you're going through some similar situations, it can be frustrating. Try to focus on the positive of what you're getting out of it, being out in nature, the exercise that you're getting if you happen to get a squirrel, consider it a bonus. But believe me, I understand. And 
plenty of people out there understand how difficult it can be to uh, be successful at squirrel hunting. I'm not using a shotgun. I am the only person that I have seen out there and by sound. The only two types of firearms that are allowed in Illinois state land, uh, it, number one, it specifically has to be designated as being approved for air rifles to use an air rifle. Other than an air rifle up to 25 caliber, you can use a shotgun and that's it. And like I said, based on what I'm hearing, everybody else is using shotguns. I don't really know, have not seen nor heard of anybody else using an air gun. So shotgun is a lot more forgiving as far as accuracy goes and squirrels go. So it is a challenge and I welcome a challenge and hopefully can be more successful in future endeavors. Hope the information in the video helps. Uh, certainly don't get discouraged if you're out there and you're squirrel hunting using an air gun. Uh, it is a good challenge and don't look at it as uh, a negative look at that challenge as a positive that's really the basis of the video so you guys until the next one stay safe and shoot safe